Welcome back to my channel where I'm always happy to see you. And today we will talk about a very interesting subject. We will talk about sperm. Do you think it's easy to be a sperm? Let's compare the sperm life from the sea urchin and from the human. If you just look at the samples, they're very different. This is the sperm from the sea urchin and this is the sperm from the human. They're different not only in volume, but they're also different in how they look like. The sea urchin sperm is very concentrated because the sea urchins have only one job to do, to make more sea urchins. The fertilization is external, so they just release their gametes, both sperm and eggs, right in the ocean. You can see that right now the sea urchin is shedding the sperm, and you can see this smoke-like sperm being released in the ocean. This is called broadcast spawning. It's the same as if you're releasing billions of darts in the air, and you're just hoping that some of them, at least some of them, will get to the aim. And uh, to make more sea urchins, this animal have two major tricks. One is to make sperm as concentrated as possible, and another one is to make a cloud of sperm and eggs. So these animals actually have the mechanism to sense that the other animal is releasing the sperm on the eggs. So in that case, they make this really concentrated cloud of sperm and eggs, and in that case, this increases the, uh, increases the chance that they will meet and the new urchin will be produced. Now let's get to the really interesting stuff, maybe the reason why you are actually watching this video, human sperm. You can definitely see that the human sperm is not as concentrated as the sea urchin sperm. And the reason for that is that the human sperm is actually a very complex thing. Only 2-5% to of the semen are the sperm cells. During the process of ejaculation, the sperm passes through the ejaculatory ducts and mixes with fluids from the seminal vesicles, the prostate, and the bulbo-uretral glands. 65 to 75 percent of semen is produced by seminal vesicles and contains lots of fructose. 25 to 30 percent are produced by the prostate and less than 1 percent by the bulbo-uretral glands. That would be the mucus to facilitate mobility. As a result, we get translucent liquid with white or yellowish tint that has all the ingredients to survive in the woman's vagina and to swim to the egg. Now let's get to something really exciting, microscope. You can see under the microscope that the sea urchin sperm is very abundant and very mobile. In fact, sea urchin sperm relies on the pH gradient to power the mitochondria. It is uptaking the sodium ions from the water and releasing the hydrogen ions from itself. And as a result of this molecular swap, the mitochondria gets a lot of energy. So that's why the sea urchin sperm uh, can be so fast. The human sperm under the microscope looks different than the sea urchins, less abundant and slower. And it has a completely different mechanism to get energy. It uses fructose supplied by seminal vesicles. The levels of fructose are directly linked to the sperm mobility, and the normal concentration is 2 to 5 microgram in milliliter. Now, once you've heard all this, let's summarize what we actually learned today. In the case of sea urchin, the whole ocean is against the poor spermatozoan. What the sea urchin does, it produces unbelievable amount of sperm and unbelievable amount of eggs. What it also does is that it actually uses the main enemy, the ocean, as an energy source. In that case, the sperm can move really, really fast. In the case of human, the sperm cannot pass through vagina without help. What the human does, first of all, it enables the delivery of sperm as close to the egg as possible. And also the human produces the survival kit, the seminal fluid. And the seminal fluid contains the energy, fructose, the mucus for easier movement, and a lot of other components that facilitate the survival of the sperm inside the vagina. Isn't that smart? Click here to subscribe to my channel, because next time I will tell you something really interesting. I will tell you why we don't have the interspecies breeding and we can't produce some weird mutants like these.